So we were finally able to take a Diamond Feral Pig from our single player map during Friday's livestream, and that completed pretty much the second to last grind that I had planned for Te Awaroa. Is he that far ahead of us? Ooh. <laughs> Worth tracking, I guess, but actually level 5 Feral Pig after all that. Okay, let's keep an eye on him, because he's been stopping quite a lot. See if he'll just uh, be kind to us. Nervous, alert. Let's see what he does. We're just going to take our chance to get a little closer here. Let's alert him. Hopefully. And that's a dead level 5 feral pig. Here's the deal. Not a high estimate. That was up to 153. He's a brown hybrid fur type again, which is exactly what trolled us here on Te Awaroa, like, maybe a weekend when we started grinding for a diamond feral pig. But that's the first five I've seen in quite some time. Just get one quick screenshot. All right. Please. Yes. I accidentally hit the claim button, but 149.9. I think that's smaller than our last. Where we hit him? Double lung. Now, admittedly, that grind for a Diamond Feral Pig was a bit of an odd one because we were grinding for one back in December and then we got one in multiplayer and just recently, I realized that I wanted another one for the wall. And coming back to single player, there was pretty much just one ready and waiting for us, but that leaves us with the Albino Secateer grind as the last thing that I want to do here on Teyawaroa. And I realized, in multiplayer, that there are more zones down on this part of the river that I had never hunted in single player. So that's part of what we're going to do, is just kind of setting up for that. And the tough part about it is really coming up with the best way to do it, because there are a good number of Seeketeer bucks over there, including a level 1. But if we set up our tent and tripod on this side, we then have to go all the way around to actually go over and claim them. So I'm wondering if there's a better way of doing that by like setting up on the opposite side somewhere. So we might actually, just for now, set up our tripod and try to take them out just to get the respawns and then maybe we can find a better place to actually set up for it so just to try to get them taken out we'll set that up that is going to limit our hunting pressure and on that side there's just the two so we'll go for them first probably want to take the bigger guy first and completely lost sight of that one we got really lucky he hung around that long but luckily the ones over on the right were so far away that they didn't hear any of that, and I think that was closer to 300 meters. And none of them are broadside, which would definitely be nice. Let's actually just check to be sure. It's about 300. Probably best we take the shot when his head's down. We definitely hit all three. I'm not sure we hit the last one well, the first two we hit pretty well though. That might do enough, but yeah, I don't think a setup on this side is ideal, and that's kind of got me trying to rethink everything, because we have tripods on both sides over here, and a tent on just one side, and I think if we have tents on both sides, we can fast travel around and claim stuff that way, but for this one, because there's only drink zones on one side, I think we want to set up over there and just find a way to be able to see to both zones. By the way... I believe that is a red spotted Sika, with a level 3 as well. We could almost do two different tripods, because if we set up somewhere in the middle over there, we might be able to see to where we shot these three, and then we could also go for these ones. So we'll do the same thing just to kind of save on hunting pressure once we get a little closer. We'll set up our tripod and just take those guys out. And then, again, we'll kind of try to find ourselves a spot. The other option is, though... I guess we could set up our tent over here and then have a second tripod for the ones over on that side. There's a lot of things we could do with this. So first, let's just go ahead and get these two. We might as well be working on the respawns as we kind of figure this out. But there's a lot of lakes that we want to visit. And the less time that we spend running around trying to claim stuff, the better. Now, this guy, normally it would make the most sense to take the more difficult shot first. But I want to make sure we get the red spotted one. I feel like that's almost a rare. And then we can make the shot on that guy as well. So that's like seven Seeketeer down already. 
but as far as the setup, I think we're just gonna have to go over there and kind of look around and see where we could potentially see the best. But I like this area as a, a good spot to get a good number of bucks. I think we can actually make this work. So we're gonna claim these two. That guy was even a gold. And I like the little red spot. And all we've gotten for red spot at Sneaker Deer has been like level twos and threes. But the ones that we shot over there are about 400 meters. So if we set up right in the middle, and if we can get a tripod position where we can see to where that zone is, I think that might be kind of the ideal setup. So kind of in between the two bits of hunting pressure, somewhere maybe in this general area. If I could get a waypoint to go down, that would be nice. I don't know why it didn't want to actually let me. But down towards the water, I think we can maybe do this. We'll have to kind of play with this one, because it's going to depend on where the Sika Deer drink in that zone by the bridge. But if we have the tripod here, we can see potentially to both zones, and if our tent's on this side, it's not nearly as much running around to go and claim everything, and that kind of lets us be more efficient and maybe check more zones during their drink time, so we'll try this and maybe down the road we'll adapt it if we have to. And then we get to the second zone, and we can see the ones that we shot over there first. So if we just have a tripod probably down on that flat area, that's kind of the least amount of running because we don't have to like sneak up or run further. So I think that's going to be where we want to set up. And also, we got our 30 scoring level 1 Sika Spike. So let's place another tripod here, assuming it's going to let us. And that will at least be our kind of baseline uh, setup for this area. And generally with any kind of grind, it's all about like adapting things to what works best. But at least to start with, we're going to have something here that we can kind of work with. And going forward, we'll kind of see how it does. And I think probably the first two we shot here were Stilvers, and this is that one that we missed once. It looks like he was just stuck into maybe round of the way, so we got lucky. And actually, that guy even made gold, so a couple of decent sized ones. And now we can fast travel back and kind of see what's going on for the rest of the river. I find it quite interesting, like, how much variance there is from one run to the next in how many Sika Deer there are along this river. Because sometimes we'll get like 20, and sometimes we won't actually get that many, but I want to have a tent on this side as well. And it's pretty much just for fast traveling and claiming purposes, but putting it right by the tripod would potentially be good if we do want to just go straight to it and actually take some that are on that side. So that was another part of the setup I wanted to do. We'll check and see if there's any more down here along this part of the river. Now we have a couple of lakes to get to yet. I mean, there are a few does here, but other than that, the river's pretty empty for Sika Deer on the west side. So I haven't seen much that uh, would say that shooting the does is actually worth it. So we'll go down to the lakes and see if maybe they're a little more full than normal. It's actually been a little more empty than I would expect. It could just be the fact that we've shot a good number of Sika Deer and they're starting to use other areas. And if that's the case, we'll just kind of have to find those. But we're up here at this lake now, and I don't think this one's ever failed to produce a good number of them, so we'll go around here, we'll get what we can, and then I think the last thing that we really need to do setup-wise is this particular tent right here, because there's kind of like an open area, this little strip right here that leads to this basically little pond. I think that's a good place to put a tent at the end of, because just from being down there actually hunting for feral pigs, I'm thinking if we have the tent there, we should be able to see pretty much any Sika Deer that are drinking at the pond itself. The other part of it though, with the other lakes being kind of empty, is they do hide really well, so it could just be that we were missing them. That might not have been the best shot we've taken, but we had to go a little bit back to have any chance to get the angle we needed. And probably we should scan along here again because, like I said, they just hide so well. They're a relatively small species, and then when it's all like dark along there, any little shadow or even brush they can just kind of hide in. Like really, if it wasn't for the spotting outline, I don't know that we'd be able to even get some of these shots in there. Especially one like that, we just couldn't see anything but the outline. The unfortunate part about a lot of them is they're just in a really good spot, whether it's behind a tree or whatever it is to where the tripods that we have set up aren't the most useful. But as long as we don't shoot too many in one spot, we're getting enough elsewhere that we still clear a ton of hunting pressure, so shooting three in any one zone really isn't that big a deal even without the tripod. So we've kind of looked the whole way around the lake, but 
I would imagine, as we continue to go along here, there's probably going to be more bucks that we hadn't seen, just like that guy right there. They don't often have herds of, like, bucks and does. I don't know what we hit, but it wasn't him, so we'll have to try that again when he slows down. There must have been a little bit of brush in there. Still didn't hit him. There we go. And we're still just finding more little bucks hidden in there. They've all been pretty average size. But also, most of what we shot is threes. I'm actually not 100% sure that we've even seen a four yet. But even still, we're killing a number of golds as we go along. So finding everything is going to be a bit of a challenge, but that was another gold just barely. Then this would have been the one that we missed twice. Still don't know exactly what happened, but we ended up in the liver with our trotting shot, so still got the silver out of them. It is nice, though, just like seeing all the different fur types as we do this. It's kind of an interesting rack as well. But I think this grind is going to be one of the more enjoyable ones, even if we don't get that many diamonds. Though I kind of expect to because they seem to be quite common. Just all the different fur types and stuff that we'll see as we do it, I think is going to keep it kind of interesting. But it's 11.30 right now. I think we'll still have time to go and get this tent moved around. And then, yeah, at that point, that's pretty much all the zones that we have uh, discovered. So hopefully moving this is going to make our one last spot here a little easier. Well, that kind of adds some interesting uh, effects to this that I didn't plan on. I didn't know they drank on this side as well, so I did see that there was a drink zone here. But I kind of thought that might have been a feral pig one. I think this still could work, though. It depends on where the others drink, because there's another zone up on that end. Right now we have the feral pig one showing, but I know Seek of the Year can drink there as well. I mean, if there's none over there, we could kind of just flip our idea around. I guess there were some over there. Not sure where they were hiding, or it even could be, because we had that one warning call. It could be that they were back with the other one. I don't think we hit that guy very well. We might have been too high. There's a ton of does down here, but a couple of bucks as well, so a spot that we definitely want to make sure that we have set up. I'm really not sure how we're going to do this then. Maybe we will, just because they all came from back there. Place our tent up on this side and be able to look down that, like, open stretch. I mean, like I said earlier, it's kind of all about adapting these setups to, like, what works best for where the zones actually are. And the only way to really figure it out is just keep hunting it and learning it. But now you can see, this side has a secret deer zone as well. So we'll just have to sort of figure out what works best as we go along. But for now, we'll have a tent here. And I guess we might as well also set up a tripod. Just to kind of have the most ability to take as many secret deer as we see. But then I think we have two to claim yet. And I was actually planning on just kind of ending with that, and we did hit him just a little too high. But we might as well just cover all of our bases and maybe set up a tent somewhere over on this side for this little zone. I know they can drink, like, multiple places along this coast. In fact, that feral pig drink zone might be another spot where Sika Deer could drink as well. So we'll go back uh, with the time and make it their drink time again and just go over there and see. Because if we're going to spend the time to just get everything set up anyway, we might as well have as many options as we can possibly get. So we might have actually been too early getting over to the coast here. I kind of thought we were good, because the late secret zone started at 9, and we didn't even start running over here till then, but this guy's just walking in. And that might explain why there weren't any down at this part, but I figured since we were here, we'd just kind of run the entire thing. And we could have waited and seen where his zone was, but... I think in general we're going to be just doing the entire coast most times. So I'm not sure tripods or tents beyond that point where it seems like they first start drinking are going to be that necessary. But another bonus secret here for hopefully eventual albino respawns. And as we're reaching the river, I think that is going to be it for our setup. So we have a lot more to work with now. We've got better place tents down here and a new tent over here. And I think what we did over on this side of the river is really going to allow us to kind of speed up our process. And I'm just realizing, I think I left that first tripod set up there, so we'll have to go back for that. But 
I think we'll be able to be a lot more efficient with what we have going now, and hopefully that's going to allow us to get to our albino secret deer box sooner. But anyway, we got to go back to the trophy lodge for our feral pig, actually. And I mentioned it earlier in the week that I wanted another diamond to put up here with the two diamond wild boar. And I like that. I like the variety it adds, and I just think that looks good with, like, the larger pig down there below them. Even though they max at a lower weight by, like, 80 pounds or so. They're still, for some reason, a lot bigger looking, but yeah, I think that's cool. Definitely some variety. Maybe another fur type would be nice, since we do have another brown hybrid diamond, but I like that. It's good to see that in the lodge and not just the three diamond wild boars side by side. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.